Hey everybody, welcome to the summer 2019 Adobe Photoshop brush update from yours truly, Kyle Webster. And I want to go through some of these brushes with you so we can make sure we all understand what they do. So let's start with the China marker. This one's pretty straightforward. It's a drawing tool. And um, what I like about this one is that I can use light pressure and color in an area and you'll still see some of the texture of the paper coming through just like you would with the regular China marker. And what's nice is you can adjust the flow on this one. So I'll come up here and I'll just knock the flow down to 50% and you'll get a very different effect. And you can continue to play with this on your own and see what kind of a flow setting feels best for you. And if you really want it to just have a lot of texture, a lot of grit, just keep lowering that flow and see what happens. So combine this with some pencils and you can get some nice graphite effects as well charcoal effects. It's, it's good for lots of things. Let's move on to the caveman. Uh, this one again also pretty straightforward. It's just a brush that has a ton of texture and you can make these nice broken lines as you see what I'm doing here. But when I use more pressure I can fill in an area. I can also pass over it multiple times and more and more of that texture will eventually just go away. I think this could be useful for comics artists who are doing any kind of a sort of rocky descriptive area where you can just knock in some texture like this. Maybe you've got a uh, character hiding out in the mountains somewhere and you just want to quickly knock in something suggesting that you've got some rocky terrain and that's one way to do it but of course there are so many other things you could do with this so play with it and enjoy it. Now the Atlas Brush CD. CD stands for Color Dynamics, which means that this brush has Color Dynamics built into it. And with this particular brush, it's referring to foreground and background jitter. So if I were to change my foreground color to a red here, you'll notice that with great uh, uh, more pressure, I'm going to get more of that red, and with less pressure, I'm going to get more of a, a white color, because white is the background color. And so this one is just useful for um, getting these brush strokes that feel like they're laying over one another. So give that a try. Try mixing colors as well. So instead of using white for your background color, go ahead and try and assign something different. So with the red and the blue here, I should get something kind of violet like this. And that's really fun to play with. That's the Atlas Brush CD. The regular Atlas Brush, which was named by my son, so thank you for that, uh, Wolfie Bear. This one will allow you to do the same thing as before, which is to have the foreground and the background colors mix, depending on how much pressure you use. And what I like this for is something I had demonstrated in another video, which was how to get the um, impression that you have visible brush strokes, um, meaning that, let's see, if I change this color here and then change the background color to something similar to the foreground color, not too much variation. So I can paint strokes with medium pressure, then use heavier pressure on top, and then light pressure on top of that. And what I wind up being able to do is see the brush strokes coming through. Now if I want more of a obvious shift here, I can do this. I can make my background color a little bit farther away from the foreground color in terms of where it sits on the color wheel, right? And then you can get these nice strokes where you really get the impression of paint being laid over paint. So put some red and then put some lighter color over it. Fun for the people who like to emulate gouache and things like that. Moving on to the blockhead brush. Blockhead brush I love for just textural work. Um, it's kind of a combination of a pastel sort of feel, you know, when you use heavier pressure like this, and then a spatter feel when you use lighter pressure. So you get the best of both worlds with this one, and I'm sure you'll find lots of uses for it. This one, of course, again, you can play with the flow. So if I knock that to half of what it was, I'm going to get more of the spatter with lighter pressure. So go ahead and play with that and see what you get. Rock the Block Oil is one of the mixer brushes. And this is the kind of mixer brush where after I put some paint down, I can use a separate color and put some of that down as well. And then what I can do is hold down the Option key, which temporarily pulls up my eyedropper tool. 
And what that does is it means that I'm actually selecting any and all colors from the document from wherever I just clicked. And to make this more obvious, I'll go ahead and add a little bright pink on top of this. There we go. And then I'll select this area right here. And if I look over here in the top left corner where my colors are, you'll see that I've sampled an area that has pink and purple in it. So when I paint, I get both of those colors. I'll try a little another one. There you go. So both of those colors are coming through in the strokes that I'm painting. Now what you can also do is if you've used mixer brushes in the past, you can actually turn off the uh, mixing altogether by lowering the wetness to zero. So now every brush stroke I make is not going to do any mixing with the strokes that are already on the canvas. So give that a try as well if you want to do this kind of thing where you just build up an area really fast with one stroke over another. That's really fun to try. The Jazz Mixer oil brush, same thing. It does exactly the same thing. So I can put some paint down, grab another color, pop that on top, and then sample from that area and whatever I paint it's going to have both those colors in it, as you can see here. And now we move on to the daisy chain. Daisy chain, very self-explanatory. What it really is is just one of the um, halftone brushes, of which I've made many, of course. And uh, you can check out the halftone brush set, download those from your CC account. Remember to download brushes from Photoshop. It's as simple as going to this little drop-down menu here and selecting Get More Brushes. When you do that, it'll pop you out to the page where you can download all the brush sets. There are over 1,600 of them to play with. Daisy Chain Square, same idea, except it's just a square brush shape. Um, so light pressure means very little of the pattern coming through. Heavy pressure means you can move all the way to black, like the other halftone brushes. New Impressions is one of the Impressionist brushes, and this one takes advantage of color dynamics as well. So any color you select, it's going to very subtly change the hue, saturation, and value of that stamp every time you pull along on your canvas. Atlas Blair is related to the Atlas uh, brush as well as the Atlas 2. These, two. these two are grouped together. The new Softy is exactly what it sounds like. It's a soft brush and it's just kind of like butter. You gotta, you gotta try it out and see how it feels. But what I like is it's got a little texture in it too. And so if you're doing any kind of a gouache sort of appearance for your stuff, or um, maybe acrylics, you probably find a use for this brush. Really nice for blending and for soft transitions and things like that. The Blair Pro is related to the Atlas Blair, and it just has a lighter flow, and it means you can slowly build up your color with this, also taking advantage of foreground and background jitter. The Bristle Mixer Full is another one of the mixer brushes. And this one is just a bristle brush. Use a slightly darker color here so you can see this. There we go. And um, it has the mixing built in so that any color that's on the canvas, it will mix with. And this one will select solid color when you use the eyedropper. However, you can always change that. If, if for example, I wanna paint some brush strokes that have lines in them like this of the green and the yellow, I can choose not to load solid colors only, then sample that area, and when I paint, this is what you get. So that's quite nice as well. All right, moving on to the Chunky Monkey. Chunky Monkey is a chunky brush with an interesting pattern to it. And I find that this is probably most useful for concept artists, people who need to really quickly pop a background in somewhere and just make it have a lot of um, texture and variety in the appearance of the, uh, the strokes. So I'm sampling here quickly and then painting, sampling and painting. All that being done by holding down the option key temporarily to pull up that eyedropper tool. All right, so this is the Dark Hatcher brush. Dark Hatcher is a hatching brush for any kind of um, filling in an area with an interesting pattern, an interesting texture. It responds to the direction that you move the brush. So if you were to take your stylus and move it in a circle, you'll notice that the Hatcher brush will follow that directional movement 
by rotating accordingly. So you can do some pretty nifty things with that as well. Maybe you're doing some kind of a uh, an action scene where you want these strokes to move in a radial pattern away from whatever the action is. Maybe there's some kind of explosion or something like that. Alrighty. Moving on, we have the Predator. And the Predator is just an interesting variation of this brush that is used for textural uh, background work or for just creating a little bit of visual interest in an area. I'm sure especially comics folks will find some very interesting way to use this brush. It, it seems to me like when I create brushes like this I always find some pretty fascinating ways to use them thanks to the comics art community. The Pollock brush of course as you would expect is spatter and it's a good one. Lots of different um, effects are possible with this depending on how you want to use it with your spacing. So if you space it really far out, go to your brush tip shape and increase the spacing, you're going to have spatter that's more sparse. And of course you could tighten that up with the spacing and then get spatter that's a lot tighter. Pollock CD is color dynamics. So if I select for example this yellowish orange color, you're going to see drops of yellow, drops of orange, sometimes maybe a little bit of red, and that'll give you some nice variety automatically when you paint with that brush. The Archive Inker, another inking tool. You know I'm obsessed with making tools for inking, uh, so this one is of course uh, one of my favorites, and I spend usually more time <laughs> on inking brushes than probably any other category. So I highly recommend you try this one out and see what it can do for you. I think you'll like it. And we come to the last brush which is the Sean brush named after the great Ben Sean. This might be my favorite in the whole set simply because for years I've been thinking about making this brush and finally got around to it. Now if anybody hasn't seen Ben Sean's really beautiful drawings go ahead and look him up and you'll see some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, what I love is this sort of uh, sketchy quality to the lines that he makes and I've uh, done my best to make that happen here. I recommend drawing in short bursts if you want to make a single line and really see it break apart and do some interesting things like this, which really does look a lot like the line work you'll see in his pieces. And um, I've sized this one quite large. It's 150 pixels, and the reason for that is because, again, he did a lot of poster work and things like that. I'd like you to be able to work high res with this and um, really get some big stuff going on. And because it is as big as, as 150 pixels, you could actually size it even bigger and you'll still get a pretty decent line. Um, so here, if I've gone up to 300, you'll notice that uh, the line is still quite nice and I can still get down to a really thin mark as well. So that range is pretty spectacular to go from a big chunky mark like this and then right on down to something like that. So again, uh, this might be my favorite brush in the set. Enjoy it, have a good time with it. So there you have it. That's the 2019 Adobe Photoshop Summer Brush Update. Have a great time with these brushes and please leave comments for me on Twitter or on this YouTube video. And let me know what you'd like to see me develop in the future because I'm releasing these updates quarterly for the most part and I love to get input from all of you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.